Okay, members, the YouTube stream has started, so let's go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar, which is an online digital platform and stream through the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants ha who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch it on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting via their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted upon entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by city staff, one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Please only use one device at a time, as using additional devices can cause static noise and may interfere with the audio of this hearing. To ensure further audio clarity, we suggest that you do not use the speaker phone function of your telephones. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelist when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an attendee. Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use the share screen option or any other panelist controls during a video appearance. And city staff will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect this instruction. For all those who are waiting online, please ensure that you have called in with the number you were originally registered with. If you call in with a different number, you will not be able to speak on the item. At this time, I wish to make a really important land acknowledgement. We are participating in this public hearing today online from the North York Civic Center. We would like to begin this meeting with an acknowledgement of the land that indigenous communities have been part of this land and this area's history since time immemorial. We would like to acknowledge that this land, we would like to acknowledge this land with gratitude and respect as the land on which we reside and work is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, Métis, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. We also encourage you to reflect on, upon your commitments both collectively and individually in taking steps towards meaningful reconciliation with Indigenous communities. Now in accordance with sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto hearing, this hearing, is now called to order. My name is Nadini Sankar Peralta and I will chair today's meeting and joining us on the panel are some astute members, Nazila Atarodi West, Paul Kidd uh, for this morning, Natasha Manning as well, and also city staff are present, our Deputy Secretary Treasurer Simon Lang and some very hardworking planning staff, Alex Chu, Sam Mozayani, Daphne Davis and Irving Bridgeraj. The, City of Toronto, uh, the Committee of Adjustments considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that applies to property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming users, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Receiving a copy of uh, the decision of the committee, anyone attending today who wants to receive that copy of the decision of the committee, uh, on an application must submit a written request to the, uh, for a decision by email. 
please ensure that you include your name, your address, and your email because the Committee of Adjustment and the Toronto Local Appeal Body, the T-Lab, will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, you may be able to appeal the decision to the Toronto Local Appeal uh, Body in some limited circumstances and in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. However, the provincial government recently amended the Planning Act and generally removed rights of third parties to appeal Committee of Adjustment decisions. As of November 28, 2022, only the applicant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, specified persons and public bodies as those terms are, ident are defined in the Planning Act are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. So the hearing procedures are as follows. I will call each item in order listed on the agenda. Where an item is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair if they still wish to speak to the item. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. If you, I will ask you to summarize your remarks and when you, when you are reaching the five minute mark without exception. When addressing the committee, please state clearly your name and address. Please remember to confine your remarks to the matters described in the application only. The applicant or general uh, or agent proceeds first and will make the presentation to the committee on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to the proposals at the hearing today to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of application are informed of the changes, the committee may decide to defer the application if it is substantially revised. Then individuals in either support or opposition of the application will be invited to speak. If more than one individual wishes to speak to the application, we ask that you try not to repeat the points already made by other members. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker as they have finished their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has the opportunity to rebut all the issues that were raised in, by the previous speakers within a five minute time frame. This will mark the end of discussion on the item and the item will be taken into committee for a decision. Um, in today's um, morning session, uh, I'd like to first of all uh, talk to the confirmation of minutes. Uh, the last minutes that we do have to approve is um, a September 22nd, uh, sorry, September 23rd minutes from 2022? 2021. 2021, okay. So I believe uh, who was present on that was myself and member Kidd. So um, I'll ask for a motion to approve those minutes. Member Kidd, motions to approve, I'll second it. All those in favor? Okay, approved. Those minutes have been approved. And so now I'd like to turn it over to members. Uh, is there any declaration of interest that uh, you would like to share with the committee today? Okay, no declarations uh, of conflict of interest uh, have been declared. Um, so I'll turn it over to the Deputy Secretary Treasurer. Are there any items to close, sir? There are not. Are there any items to defer today? There are. Okay. Item six. Okay, item six. Uh, committee members, if I can turn your attention to item number six. It's 4190 Bathurst Street. Okay, perfect. And so in this item, we've got um, the agent is a Todd Trudell. Mr. Trudell, are you there? Is, 
Is Mr. Trudell available to speak to 4190 Bathurst Street? Yes, uh, it's, it's Todd Trudell. I, I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you now. If you can state your address for our records, please. Okay, I'm uh, Todd Trudell with Goldberg Group, uh, 2098 Avenue Road, Toronto, uh, M5M4A8. Okay, if you can um, let us know the reasons for your, your de re request for deferral. So we, we, had filed, we had filed a zoning review on this application in September, uh, subsequently filed the committee application in October um, with the understanding that we would have the zoning review prior to uh, the hearing. And one, one of the, uh, we, we actually received the zoning review on Saturday, February 4th, the day after the notice went out. Um, it identified some additional variances that were not identified in the waiver that we had provided and removed all of the variances to the former 7625 bylaw. So in that regard, we, we were asking for the deferral to basically correct the variances and we are having discussions with the zoning examiner on a few of the items that uh, are in question. Okay. Uh, fair enough. So, um, members, we do have a number of uh, speakers to this item. So what I'll do is I'll go to those speakers and ask them one by one, not about the application itself or their concerns, but if uh, they have any concerns with us deferring this application uh, so that the agent can work further on those newly identified uh, variances. Um, so let's turn it over to uh, a speaker, Diane. Erdos Rush and Gerald Rush. Uh, yes, hi. hi. Uh, I have no problem with deferral. Um, if you could just state your address as well, your name and address just for the records. My name is Diane Erdos Rush. I live at 20 Almore Avenue, three doors away from the proposed uh, M3H2H1. And so you have no concerns with uh, the deferral at this time? I have lots of concerns, but none with the deferral. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to, uh, yes? Sorry, can, can I ask one more question? Will we be, uh, wh when it's taken up by the uh, uh, Committee of Adjustment again, will we be informed? Yes, definitely. So it will be deferred to until, you know, uh, the applicant is ready and at the next available hearing date. And members uh, who wish to speak to this item will be uh, informed as well. Thank you very much. Okay. So moving on to uh, Mark Schwartzman. Mr. Schwartzman, are you there? Mark Schwartzman. Mark, you've been unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. If you could state your name and address okay. for our records. Yeah. My name is Mark Schwartzman, and I live at 15 Danby Avenue. Great. And do, are there any concerns you have with the deferral today? Again, uh, my concerns are not with the deferral. It's actually with uh, the project itself. Uh, I have no concerns about the deferral. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, can we get a Paul Seidman on the line? Paul Seidman. I am here. Yes, please can state your name me? and address for our records. Hello, my name is Paul Seidman. Uh, I own 17 Almore Avenue. Uh, my children live in the home. Uh, I'm, I'm, my address where I live is 216 Franklin Avenue in Thornhill. Oh. Um, I don't have any problems with the deferral, but I, I do have uh, reservations with, with all the variances and, and the project in general. Okay, thank you very much for that. Let's move on then to Randy Elkind. Mr. Elkind. Hi there. Yes. Oh, hi, it, it's Ms. Elkind. Yes. Yes. Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, similar to my neighbors, first of all, my name is Randy Elkind. I am owner and reside at 26 Almore Avenue, uh, M3H2H1. 
similar to my good neighbors who have uh, spoken before me. I have no uh, objection to the deferral. However, I do request that proper notification with that is timely, not uh, just within a couple business days, be provided with respect to the rescheduled hearing. We did not uh, receive uh, proper nor uh, timely, in other words, enough time uh, to respond and review the documentation and the request for the many variances that the development at 4190 is requesting. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for that, and that's well noted. So uh, if I could go back to uh, Mr. Trudell, um, you've heard, you know, some of the concerns. I'm sure that if this deferral request goes through, you will take the time to also um, perhaps meet with the neighbors and address some of those before this, uh, this application comes back to committee. Yes, uh, the, uh, the, the, the owners had, had uh, gone through the neighborhood and, and knocked on some doors, but um, with, with these specific people now, we will... Uh, reach out and have, have those discussions with them regarding the project. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, members, we've heard uh, from all of the uh, neighbors as well as the request for deferral. Um, can I get a motion on this item? Uh, Member Atarodi. Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to defer the application so the applicant can and uh, can um, revise the plan and sign die. Okay, thank you. Motion from Member Atarodi to defer this application, sign die, seconded by Member Manning. All those in favor? And your request for this application to be deferred has been approved. Thank you so much, Mr. Trudell. Okay, members, we're gonna move um, Back to item number one, which is nine Blyth Blythewood Crescent. Okay, so item number one, we've got a Noor Elgendi on the line. Noor Elgendi, are you there? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, members of the committee. I'm the authorized agent for nine Blythewood Crescent. We're proposing to construct a one-story rear yard sunroom yes, addition. I could uh, stop you there and I can get your name and address, please, for our records before you begin. Yes, yes, sorry, I forgot to myself. So um, my name is uh, Noor El Gandhi, and the address is, uh, like, my address or the company's address? It doesn't matter. Okay, so it's 245 Roy Road, Vaughan. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, members, um, I'm just double checking. We've got three variances. Uh, transportation recommends approval. And there are some staff report conditions um, to, you know, uh, that the proposal be developed in accordance with the site plan drawing, attach the report. Uh, do members require a presentation on this item? If members don't require presentation, um, Ms. Elgandi, is there anything that you would like to share with the members before they go into committee for decision making? No, I went through the staff report. It looks like um, transportation have no problem and I'm good with the conditions. Okay, great. Um, with that in mind, members, can I get a motion, please? Member Atarodi. Yes, to you, Madam Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application uh, subjected to the staff condition that the proposal be developed in accordance with site plan drawing attached to the report dated February 1st, 2023, uh, with no other condition. Okay. Or oh, actually, for um, uh, no, no other condition. Thank you, Member right. Antarodi, with a motion to approve. Uh, subject to the staff report of uh, February 1st. Can I get a seconder for that? Seconded by Member Manning. All those in favor? Okay, unanimously approved. Um, Ms. Elgandi, your application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. 
Moving on, members, to item number two. Item number two is 72 Marmot Street. And this is a proposal to construct an integral garage, a front porch, a rear deck, a second and third floor addition, and a three-story rear addition to an existing dwelling. Um, can I get a Daniel Vincani? Vinsani? Vinsani, is that how I say it? Um, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Daniel Vinsani of 335 Rathbun Road, Etobicoke. Okay, thank you so much. Members, this, this application uh, has no objections from transport, uh, no staff report, but 11 variances, and there are um, members here who, one letter of objection and members to speak to this uh, application. There are forestry conditions as well. Um, so with that, Mr. Vinsani, because we have folks wanting to speak to this application, can you provide a brief presentation um, on the merits of this application. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and committee members. Uh, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak here today. Um, like you mentioned, we are proposing to construct a second and third floor addition, a three-story rear addition, an integral garage, and rebuilding a front concrete porch and a rear wood deck. Uh, just to give some context about the neighborhood, Marmot Street, runs in the north and south direction and is situated between Sudan Avenue to the south and Eglinton Avenue to the north. The prevailing character of the neighborhood um, and the nearby street south of Eglinton consists mainly of two-story detached houses, two-story semi-detached houses, three-story houses, and a few one-story bungalows like 72 Marmot Street. Uh, the neighborhood has undergone and continues to go uh, a lot of changes development and densification. I would like to emphasize that our lot um, is narrow at only 6.1 meters, equivalent to 20 feet. And the variances that are being triggered in our case are mainly because we are building on top of an existing situation, the current footprint for the second and third addition at the front, whereas the rear addition portion uh, to the north is being jogged in to 0 0.68 meters uh, to provide additional uh, clearance. And the southern side is being kept in line with um, the existing. Um, the bylaw does ask for 0 0.9 meters um, side yards for the second and third story additions above the first floor. And this, we find it a bit problematic because we make our addition very narrow at only 4.3 meters, which is equivalent to 14 feet, and would make offset walls on both sides, which not only would be very challenging to build, but uh, the floor layout would not be optimal at all. Um, with respect to the FSI and the depth, we find that uh, these proposed stats are minor and consistent with the development in the neighborhood. I did have uh, correspondence with planning on a few occasions and uh, applied their recommendations um, by doing uh, a few revisions, um, especially when it came to the length uh, to be under 18 meters. Um, all in all, we feel that the, deve the development is desirable, uh, appropriate for the neighborhood and uh, reflective of the character, um, so we feel that it belongs, so that's all. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, members, do you have any questions of Mr. Vinsani? Uh, yes, Member Kitt, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just have a question about uh, variance number seven. I notice you're requesting a, a side yard setback of um, 0 0.34 meters, or is the uh, um, the registered right away uh, along that uh, along that side is 0 0.38 meters. So it would put the uh, addition uh, uh, four centimeters into the right of way. Can um, you uh, can so, you explain that? Uh, yeah. So mainly because um, when 
uh, certain distance to the property line uh, for building code is under uh, 0.6 meters. Uh, the current cladding that's there has to be removed and made a, a little bit thicker to to comply with um, uh, fire requirements and non combustibility so the additional four centimeters it's to make sure that it uh, complies with the building code uh, you understand this is not a building code issue it's a uh, um it's a legal issue with with respect to your uh, uh, neighbors right away, uh, and uh, uh, the committee can't uh, uh, can't give you the right to uh, to build on your neighbors right away. So a no problem. Okay, thank you so much. Any other questions from the membership? Okay, no other questions. Uh, let's turn it over to the speakers. I've got three speakers listed here. Let's begin with Margarita O'Connor. Ms. O'Connor, are you there? We're calling you, Margarita. Yeah, just uh, hello? Yes, I can hear you. If you can state your name and address for the record, please. Ms. O'Connor. Is Marmot? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Continue. Hello? Please. Yeah, so I live at 80 Marmot Street, and my husband, Dan O'Connor, will be asking all the questions on my behalf. Sure. Um, so uh, why don't you go ahead and state what your concerns are, Mr. O'Connor? Myself. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And if you could just state your name and address as well for the record. My name is Dan O'Connor. I'm at 80 Marmot Street, which is a few doors up from 72 Marmot Street. Okay. And uh, go ahead. Yes. My wife, I have a number of concerns. Um, first off, uh, I'm a lawyer. Mr. Kidd is quite right. You can't uh, you can't abrogate the right of way. That's a problem. That's a separate issue. What really concerns us uh, are just the scale of this. I realize that the idea of renovating is in keeping with the neighborhood, and that's uh, true. However, the scale of this house is, uh, it's remarkable really. It's presently just a bungalow, a very small bungalow. It was uh, a best two bedroom house, uh, really a one bedroom house in, in all practical effect. And to go up three stories with a deck on the one end and a back deck is going to make this a, a behemoth in the neighborhood. It's going to reach too far back into uh, its backyard in the sense of it'll overshadow our own uh, back door to get outside the house. Uh, we have an apartment building on the north side, which is 12 stories. And now we'll have this building, which is going to be quite large. It would be like living in a tunnel but also it extends so far back and with its back deck that will be basically under the, uh, the under the gaze of these the occupants of that house so pretty well all the time. So there's a privacy issue there and we wouldn't be able to uh, enjoy our property in, in so far as I believe that um, I'm no expert in this, but the, just the sheer scale of the building uh, would uh, block the sun at certain parts of the day and that would interfere with our enjoyment of the property as well. The, um, the, the fact that it's three floors is, um, I think, kind of unique in the area. Most houses are not three floors, uh, but it's the sheer s scale in terms of reaching into the yard that's concerned to me that it will reach beyond the back of the houses. Those, for example, to our, to the south of us, the two houses, this, this house, this, Construction will reach many uh, a number of uh, meters further back and basically close off the line of sight, close off the sun, and as I say, put us under the gaze of, uh, of of the occupants of that house. So our concern is not so much is not really the renovation. It's not. I'm sure it's going to be very nice building. I'm sure, but it's the sheer scale of it, and it's the intrusion onto our enjoyment of the property. It's not something that uh, uh, 
uh, we're supporting and uh, we're not opposed to all the construction that's going to come and all that. I mean, we accept that this happens and it's happened a lot in our street, but it's understandable. People would like to upgrade and it's fine. We're not opposed to these things. It's just the nature of this building, that the sheer scale of it. It's like uh, putting a ocean liner on a very narrow lot is what it's like that will, um, as I say, obstruct our view, obstruct the sun and put us basically living in a goldfish bowl. And for those reasons, um, we object to the just the sheer scale of it, not the simple fact that they want to renovate, which is, as I said, uh, understandable in the context of our street and our neighborhood. So you look at the other buildings on the street, you won't quite see something of this scale and they have to do it because the lot is so narrow. So in that regard, that's really our, those are our main concerns. Uh, however, that could be scaled back to something in, in commensurate with the houses that are already to the north of it, for example, um, and even to the south of it uh, would be more in keeping with the neighborhood, the overall look and use of the properties in general and a more fitting. And uh, that's what we have to say. Okay, thank you so much for that, Mr. Um, O'Connor. Um, we will move on now to, uh, no, sorry, members, do you have any questions of Mr. O'Connor? Okay, not, there being none, let's move on to Kevin uh, Uaschuk. Yes, uh, good morning. Yes, good morning. Can you good state you. your name and address for our record, please? Yes, of course. Uh, my name is Kevin Iwaschuk, okay. and I uh, co-own uh, the property at 74 Marmot Street, which is the, the neighboring property uh, to the development uh, to the north. And uh, as Mr. O'Connor had uh, stated, I'm also concerned about primarily about the scale of the development, um, specifically with regards to the uh, building uh, far back, uh, on the property. Um, my understanding is that the maximum building depth is 17 meters and the proposal is for 17.99 meters, which is more than three feet beyond the, uh, the bylaw. Um, I'm also concerned that such a building so far back will, uh, uh, limit the sunlight that comes into, into my house. Um, our primary uh, source of light is the main floor windows on uh, in the rear of the house. So I'm concerned that this development will will block that. And I'm also concerned about uh, the by building so far back and by building these, uh, I guess, multiple decks on this development, especially in the back, a third story deck, which is exceeding the the building uh, allotment for, for for such a such a deck will limit the enjoyment of my property and, you know, obviously a privacy issue on, you know, occupants of the building, you know, basically over, you know, over overseeing my, my property so close. So um, I, I'm not opposed to a development on this property, but of such a scale is, is, it seems a little, uh, it seems excessive in my, in my view. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, members, do you have any questions of Mr. Iwaschuk? Okay, there being none, let's move it then back to uh, Mr. Vinsani. Mr. Vinsani, you've heard the concerns of uh, a couple of neighboring parties. Um, would you like to address that? You have five minutes. Uh, yes, of course. Um, <clears throat> During my uh, consultation with the uh, planning department, we did um, several um, revisions, uh, especially to the third floor, in order to reduce the massing to prevent exactly the situation that uh, neighbors were, um, have concerns about. So if committee can please uh, show the, uh, the side elevation uh, on the screen, that would be a bit helpful. They're getting that ready, but in the meantime, if you can continue with your presentation. I'm not sure. Sure. So, um, uh, the, 
the the bylaw has been uh, recently amended to 10 meters in height. So the third floor alone uh, steps back at the front and at the rear. So for number uh, the the neighbor that's directly to the north of us, um, if you can see from the elevation, um, the rear portion of the building will be two story, and then there is a deck there, and then the third story the third story starts right after that. So this this was made so we don't impact um, uh, sunlight stuff like that. So the height of that wall it's only seven point four 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 three meters the back wall, right? And I understand that the neighbor has some uh, issues with uh, privacy, but if the committee desires, we could uh, put a uh, privacy fence up there, and that way, uh, hopefully, we can address some of these concerns. Okay. Members, do you have any questions of Mr. Vasani at this time? Uh, there being none, members, you've heard from the neighbors, you seen that transportation services has no concerns and there's no staff reports. There is a letter of objection uh, that has been cited with the, the neighbors and forestry conditions do seem to apply. Um, can I get a motion on this item, please? Okay, Member Kidd with a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, I've, I've listened to the neighbors' concerns uh, with regard to the uh, scale of this development. However, uh, looking at the uh, individual uh, uh, requested variances, the thing that really jumps out at me in terms of um, uh, any of these variances being uh, 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 overreach, they, they seem... Uh, um, uh, they seem to be of a minor nature, uh, 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 as far as I'm concerned. Um, my my only concern was uh, with the uh, variance number seven, which I, I, I mentioned earlier. I'm going to put forward a motion to accept the application, but to refuse uh, variance number seven, and I'm going to make it uh, subject to force, forestry condition number one. Okay, motion from Member Kidd to approve, subject to forestry. Can I get someone to second this? If no second, oh, seconded by member Atarodi. All those in favor? All those, okay, unanimously uh, approved um, with those conditions. Mr. Vasani, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Oh, and variant seven was refused. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, members, to item number three, 597 Balliol Street. And um, this is a proposal for a full third floor addition with a new three-story rear addition. And the project includes interior alterations with a new front basement walkout and porch, rear basement walkout and deck, second floor balcony and third floor walkout and a secondary suite. For this application, we've got Mr. Imran Khan. Mr. Imran Khan, are you there? Uh, my address is uh, 1906 Parkside Drive, Pickering, L1V3N5. I'm authorized agent from the owner to participate in this hearing. Right, thank you very much for right. that. Um, members, I just wanted to share that we've got uh, 16 variances. Um, a planning staff report does apply uh, with some modifications, um, as well as uh, Heritage did report that there's no comments on that. Forestry conditions do apply, and there are 10 letters of uh, opposition and some folks that wish to speak to this item. So Mr. Khan, if you would like to um, present, um, make a presentation on this application, and if there are any revisions that you'd like to make, uh, can you tell me that up front now? 
Uh, yeah, we already revised as per the discussion with the planner. Uh, we reduced uh, uh, FSI to 0.89. So if you can just state which variants, proposed, yeah. sir, if you can tell us which variants you're is, changing and from what this to is what. The, um, this is number six. Variance number six? Uh, FSI, yeah. Okay. And so and, variance uh, number six. FSI is changing from? If you could state for the record what it's changing from to, that would help uh, us. It's 089. So you're saying it's changing from 1.11 times to? No. Sorry? 0 0.89. To 0 0.89 times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other changes that's noted? Um, also, we propose trellis to hide the, because there is one uh, variance, that variance number I'm telling you, uh, this is uh, item number 13. Variance number 13, yes. Yeah, this is the trellis, we are pro uh, proposing trellis to hide the uh, uh, stair and en entrance to the basement walk out the stair uh, from the front uh, face, right? So this is also you're proposing. This is another change we discussed with the planner. Sorry, can you state what number 13 will now say? Yeah, this is, um, uh, this is the same variance we are keeping, but uh, we are proposing to hide uh, this um, visibility, to hide the visibility from the uh, road. We are proposing trellis to uh, have the fence, uh, privacy fence, right? To hide the walkout, because this is a variance oh, that okay. we cannot so uh, have. So you would like yeah. to uh, add a privacy barrier, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the same uh, variance, only privacy fence, yeah. Okay, so a privacy barrier uh, could be added for variance number 13. Um, any other changes to the application? No, that's it. Okay, and if you can provide a quick presentation on uh, what are the merits of your application before we go over to the speakers that are waiting to share their concerns. Yeah, uh, first of all, um, I like to tell about uh, the concept of the design. Our uh, main interest was to uh, do a building which can have smaller in size and also at the same time, we, like, we wanted to accommodate the basic requirement of the client for number of bedrooms and uh, living area. So uh, it, we have uh, the building uh, height, uh, three story, and uh, we, we squeeze the building uh, and have a larger backyard that has now 15.27 uh, meter setback. And the property is, uh, is uh, has 5.13 frontage. This is very smaller frontage. We didn't have that much scope even to get a good layout. Only we have uh, 12 feet interior space, uh, excluding the exterior wall. So it's very tough to get the uh, bedroom and other stuff, uh, other living areas within this um, downtown area. So what we uh, uh, wanted to do, give a building which uh, which relatively smaller in size, we increase the vertical height, but uh, three story is uh, permitted as for the zoning, only the height we increased from the permitted maximum height. And uh, also we have uh, this number of uh, 16 variance came, one variance is same, same. Uh, the number number six and number 16 both are same um uh, sorry number five and number 16 same variance so i can say 15 variances and this came because mostly for the smaller frontage of the property uh, we didn't have uh, the scope to reduce the setback side year setback frontier uh, uh, setback also the same so I'd like to start from the number one variance. Uh, this variance is regarding the 
stair access to the building stair is coming to the porch uh, and this has the variance uh, we have the setback uh, required 0.6 meter we have we propose 0.42 meters and uh, this is uh, if we even see in the site plan the neighboring uh, two property 599 and 595 billion that both has more setback uh, sorry less setback than our proposal they have less um, um side yard and frontage setback than our proposal as uh, uh, even uh, that area 0.13 meter 0 0.05 meter setback also approved like one 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 eight eight 188 cleveland street uh 65 cleveland street so we are proposing 0 0.42 so it's uh, more uh than the approved the second one uh, uh variance is for the same stair it's for the side here and it is we are proposing four and the same uh, uh, comment i have as for the first variance number three we have the landscape uh, percentage of land frontier landscape area and this area we are proposing 48.75 uh where where is this is permitted for 100 percent for the uh, excluding the driveway we don't have any driveway so uh, but uh, it's, it's still uh, we can get the approval on 548 Belleville Street. there is also 36 percent even if you we can see the 599 Belleville, the existing condition and 595 Belleville, they also have less than very uh, less than our proposal right so we we see this is also compatible with the existing condition of the surroundings and this uh, will go for the number four item that is for soft landscaping percentage we are proposing 42.25 percent whereas for 75 percent minimum permitted so this is also i have the same comments like the number three items uh, also approved in the surrounding areas. I can tell uh, 548 Belial Street, 188 Cleveland Street. So okay. this, uh, this is also Mr. similar Khan, to the development. You're running out of time. Can you please summarize? Okay. Yeah. So number five, FSI, we have, um, we already reduced to um, the number five for building height. We have 10.41. That is also approved in okay. Belial Mr. Six, Khan, eight, sorry, two, your time is up, and I want to move on. We will get back. We'll come back to you uh, after we've heard from the members who are opposing this application. Um, and I want to be fair to everyone. So, how about we move on, members? Do you have any questions before we move on to other speakers? Yes, Member Kidd, go ahead, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, um, I, again, there's a, I, I noticed a, a problem with the, the side yard, east uh, side yard setback, where there's a, a, a neighbor's right of way, uh, um, uh, 0.38 uh, meters wide, and uh, variance number eight and 10 is requesting a, uh, sorry, I guess it's just for the uh, uh, variance number eight, they're requesting um, a side yard setback of uh, 0 0.36 uh, uh, meters, which uh, uh, puts it into the right of way by by two centimeters. So, uh, 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 maybe you want uh, uh, would you consider revising that uh, variance as well to uh, uh, to make it 38 uh, centimeters? Which we uh, I, I would be com comfortable supporting that uh, request, but not the 30 36 uh, centimeters. Thing. So a, a question from member Kidd, if you would consider uh, revising variance number eight to increase um, the side yard, the west side yard setback by two centimeters? Yeah, I, I, we don't have any problem for two centimeters. Yeah, we can increase here. Yeah. Okay. So if it is approved, we can figure out the wording for that. But right now, are there any other questions from members? With that, let's move on to uh, the speakers in opposition. Um, the first person we've got is Karen Murkar. Ms. Murkar, are you there? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please state your name and address for our records. 
My name is Karen Murkar, and my husband and I reside at 599 Beloyal Street on the east side of 597. Okay, and uh, can you share with us your concerns? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chairperson and committee members for the opportunity to address you. We've lived in our home for 30 years and we love our home and we love our neighborhood. To note, there was no consultation with abutting neighbors regarding the proposed plans for 597. The first awareness of the plans came via the public hearing notice that was received in the mail. The size of the proposed property is really not appropriate given the size of the land and the neighboring properties. Properties 595 to 605 Beloyal are very small properties and 597, as you realize, measuring just 16.83 by 100 feet. So it's the narrow width of the lot that contributes to many of the requested variances. To note, homes on similar properties surrounding us, even with very large additions, are considerably smaller. With regard to specific variances, number six, at the current 0.89, the FSI is still significantly larger than the bylaw amount of 0.6. That's actually 48% larger than bylaw and is much larger than the median variance of 0.73 that's typically granted in this neighborhood. The proposed dwellings markedly larger than those of the properties to the east, west, and south, and is substantially longer than my home. I followed up with Ms. McMillan to request reasons for the 0.89 recommendation. And in the absence of specific rationale for 0.89, would request that the proposed building length be reduced by one meter. This would reduce the FSI to 0 0.80, which is much closer to the prevailing density in this area. The 0 0.73 median figure is based on a sample of 146 recent applications for FSI variances surrounding our home. And the one meter less in length to arrive at 0 0.80 would be much closer to the prevailing density and would be tremendously appreciated. Regarding request variance number 10, the proposed rear deck to be located 0.36 meters from the east side lot line, I would request that this variance request be denied. The deck on the current structure is approximately two meters from the lot line on the east side. Regarding the request number 15, the third floor rear balcony will create a privacy and overlook condition for all the abutting neighbors. Rear balconies are not a common feature in our neighborhood and we'd ask that this balcony or deck be removed. And regarding the proposed east side yard setback of 0.36 meters, which is just over 14 inches, We'd ask the committee to take into consideration the very real current issues we face regarding snow removal between our homes, ice and rain accumulation between the current structures. This setback of 14 inches for all three floors, that's both the new and third floor additions, will further aggravate the situation. The impact of decreased sunlight from the west and the potential of accumulated snow and ice falling from the third floor of 597. With 597, it's a gambrel roof, as is ours. So snow and ice falling from the third floor down to our home is a serious concern, especially in this period of climate change. Currently, the structures are so close together that the eaves troughs are overlapping. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share these concerns. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, for that, committee members, do you have any questions of Ms. Murkar? There being none, let's move on to the next speaker, Jane Burns. Ms. Burns, are you there? Madam Chair, I've been advised Jane's Burns, Jane Burns will not be attending the hearing, and Karen Murkar is acting as her agent. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think she may have mentioned that at the beginning. I'm not sure, but um, let's move on then to Atina 
Keshavarzian and Salman Raname. Ra I I may be s mispronouncing that. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. If you could state your name and address for our records, please. Yes, my name is Atena, last name Keshavarzian. I reside at 595 Balliol Street with my husband, Saman Rahnamai, on the west side of this property. Um, once, um, I just wanted to thank for the opportunity to raise our concerns to the committee. Our concern is not the construction itself, but the scale of the house, like my good neighbor Karen also mentioned. I will touch on a couple of specific concerns um, shortly. So the first one is, again, the FSI being too high for the lot size, even at the 0.89. Overall building size pertaining to requested variance number six um, is very concerning to us. Um, it blocks natural sunlight on the adjacent properties, including ours. And furthermore, there will be huge implications for drainage of rain and snow as the massive uh, structure beside our building will reduce um, the landscaping in the backyard and this proposed structure is comparable to 593 Balliol Street which is situated uh, on a very much la larger lot. So we request that the length of the building be reduced by at least one to two meters um, for this concern. And then the next concern I'd like to raise is the front porch stairs setback pertaining to variance number two. And um, given the existing buildings are extremely close together, this proposed structure intends to maintain the existing narrow setback of the exterior walls. It's even more important to have proper setback where you intend to enter the narrow corridors between um, these buildings. And the third item I'd like to mention is the third story rear balcony setback, variance uh, number 14. Um, this is a privacy concern for us in, uh, explicitly in such a narrow lot. We would request that either the balcony is disallowed or that the setbacks on their current bylaws be reduced. We also have concerns uh, with falling ice and snow from the new structure onto our rooftop, causing property damages. A number of different requested variances contribute to this potential problem, including variance number 5 and 16, number 7 regarding narrow side setbacks, and the steep slope of the roof, variance number 12. As well, we also just noticed there are plans that the windows in the basement are our, on our side of, of the house. And this could be at risk if a fire happens in the basement. So I don't think that windows should be allowed closer than three meters apart of our house. With that all, those were most of our concerns that I wanted to raise to the committee. Thanks again for your consideration. Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, members, do you have any questions? Uh, no questions noted. Uh, let's move on to the last speaker, uh, Ms. Ann Jones. Ms. Jones, are you there? And you've Hello? Been yes, uh, I can hear you. If you can state your name and address for records, please. Okay, then. Um, my name is Ann Jones. I live with my husband, Ralph Jones, at 593 Balliol Street. Thank you. Share with us your concerns, please. <clears throat> I'm speaking today um, for my husband, who is unable to uh, join this meeting, and that was approved um, in a letter I sent in yesterday. Uh, my husband and I have lived in this home for almost 40 years. Uh, he bought in 1980. We're two doors west of the current property. In our submission, I actually submitted um, a written submission on our behalf, uh, but then a new, a new um, 
letter was sent out, which I didn't receive. So I've got some changes in my submission. Uh, and so I'll just talk about it um, at the today at the panel. Thank you. Um, in our submission, we, re we, re we referenced um, 16 minor variances submitted for 597 Beloyal. Um, when I'm looking, just looking at it, the scope was immediately concerning. Just uh, even though they are minor reference, uh, minor variances, if you add up the sheer number of variances they're asking for and look at them as a whole, they become a major change <coughs> with significant ramifications. And you've heard from people already on some of these issues. I'll try not to talk about things that have been um, addressed already, but a couple I will. So the first one is the FSI, which is at currently 0.89. The allowable, as we know, is 0.6. This is 150% over the current guideline and not even close to the mean in the neighborhood, which is 0.73. And that 0.73 includes the outliers, as well as a lot of semi-detached homes in this neighborhood as well, which some, uh, which make, so at 7.73, um, that would be closer. Karen suggested at 0.8 would be much appreciated as well. Um, let's take into account that the open spaces below, so the, there's not full floor, floor space in the building, actually creates a footprint, footprint that's larger than one would think. So there's also the request for variance on height from 9.9 .9 to 10.4. That's 15% higher than the current bylaw. We realize it's three stories plus a basement, not just three stories. Uh, in itself, it doesn't sound like a huge variance, but combining it with the large variance in FSI, it starts to become um, a, a bigger picture issue. The resulting, again, three-story plus basement structure takes up a substantial portion of the lot and footprint and height. Um, realizing that these buildings were built 100 years ago, uh, they, they're taking advantage, as many people do, of some of the grandfathered positions. But I think the um, representative for the owner used the word squeeze. He was squeezing in uh, to this lot, uh, what he could in terms of this home, and definitely that would be a word I'd use. Its size and scope seems monstrous in comparison to the neighboring homes. So it's not at all in keeping with the coverage um, or the or the view or the look of the homes in the, of the immediate neighbors or in this neighborhood in general. Um, again, 14 and 15, the balconies are troublesome from privacy perspectives. And I think all of my other issues have been talked to at length by other folks. So I will just end it uh, with that and accept that we are in favor of a growing and changing neighborhood as long as it's respectful of the neighbors and um, is in keeping with what is uh, how the changes are happening here. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones. Um, members, do you have any questions of Ms. Jones at this time? Okay, thank you, neighbors, for all of your concerns. Let's move it right back to um, the agent, Mr. Khan. Would you uh, like to, you have five minutes to rebut the concerns of the neighbors or address their concerns, please. Um, yeah, actually, I have a uh, uh, few comments about the uh, balcony deck, um, bo both front and back side. Um, uh, this uh, these balconies uh, we have, but we also can have a privacy fence on the both sides above six feet, so that way we can maintain the privacy from the neighbor. Um, and uh, uh, this is for the balconies and deck. And uh, now for the FSI and for building height, building height uh, we try to reduce narrowing down the height at the top the third floor so we we are proposing uh the roof slope that that also has one variance that is also very minor so um trying to make the height more um, uh, more visible uh, less visible sorry and then um, for the fsi uh in our uh, research on this area uh, for previous uh, on previously approved 
committee of adjustment it's already approved more than 1.0 um even in, uh, on Belial street like 1.14 1.26 right so our our one is uh, 0.89 uh, if we co uh, compare with those uh, uh, approved one um so these are the main uh, thing for for i got from the comments from the neighbors i would uh, explain this way and i in my sense with respect to the approved uh, committee of adjustment variance and existing condition these variances all variances are minor and also this came for the small size of the width uh, it's narrower property yeah thank you okay thank you uh, Mr. Khan. Members, do you have any questions of Mr. Khan at this time? A question from Member Atarodi. Yes, to you, Madam Chair. I have a question regarding variance number, um, hold on a second, the variance number 10. Um, I've, no I've noted that applicant modify variance number 8, which is the proposed East Yard Yard setback, uh, uh, to 0 0.38 meet, centimeter. Um, so does this modification affect variance number 10? Uh, 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 no, variance number 10 is regarding the deck, right? So we didn't change anything for the deck. I understand, but when you change the east side yard setback, means you are pushing back the envelope of the building, like... Um, two centimeters. So does that affect also the stairs? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, because we will align the deck with the with the building. Yeah. So is that, um, can you, would you please provide us with the number for a variance number 10? Yeah, uh, then uh, this will go for 0.38. Sorry, from what? 0 0.38 meter, the setback. Number 10. Okay. From the east side, right? Yes, I'm, I'm asking about variance number 10. Yeah, yeah. That is, uh, we, are, we are also doing this point, 0 0.38 meter. So, okay, thank you. So my other question is that, are these east and west um, setbacks, uh, the existing, because I, I've noticed that the existing building, how, is, is it in the same place or? Yeah, the setback uh, for the side, also the front, all are uh, as per the existing conditions. So it means when you want to modify variance number eight, you will uh, demolish that existing part of it, at least east side of the building, correct? Um, we, uh, we, we, are, uh, we are not, we are keeping the side of the building, right? Because uh, that is, um, we are, uh, developing the existing building addition and alteration. We are keeping, if you see the uh, ground floor plan, that the solid hatch, those the wall we are keeping, the both side of the building, east and west. Correct, so that's why I'm asking this question. When you modify variance eight uh, for east side, you're set back to 0 0.38 to uh, respect the right of way, so it means that the portion of existing building located on the east side of the building, that's what you want to demolish or modify as well? Yeah, we have to modify, like uh, we have to uh, change the exterior material. It's only two centimeters, so we have to do something without demolition, just uh, narrowing uh, the building, sorry, exterior wall thickness. So, I mean, if you want to keep the existing, so... So, sorry, I ask you one more, uh, one more time. So, when you modify variance number eight, means you want to modify the setback on the east side yard setback. Based on your proposal, you are keeping some portion of the building, which is in the front one, and you want to do addition on the back. By modifying variance number eight to 0 0.38, it means you want to demolish or modify the east side yard for the existing portion as well. Is that correct? Yeah, yes, correct. Okay, that's the that's one thing that I want to get a clarification. But apart from that, um, I personally 
still have problem with the with both east and west side of setback. But um, but that is all I want to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Member Atarodi. I hope that was sort of clear for members um, that the uh, applicant is willing to modify variances number eight and ten, and additionally meet the staff reports um, with those two conditions changing, that is variance number six and then um, sort of the uh, privacy screen uh, and the comments of um, the planning staff report has been met. But also he'd like to put privacy screens on both um, balconies that are being suggested in the application. Members, do you have any other questions? before we take this into committee for a motion. Okay, if not, uh, we have a decision to make. Um, so I'll leave it up to you members to consider this for a moment and come forward with a motion when you're ready. Madam Chair? Yes. Could I just say, the privacy screen wouldn't be part of the, the variance. No, it wouldn't be, but it's something that he suggested that he would like to do to appease the neighbors. That's what I've heard him say. Correct. So if you want that, it should be a condition and not actually part yes. of an amendment. Absolutely. And that is if members agree uh, to approve this application or deny it or defer. So whenever you're ready, I'll entertain a motion. Okay, motion from Member Manning. Member Manning, I don't hear you. <laughs> Through you, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application um, subject to variance number six, uh, being the FSI being reduced to uh, 0 0.89 times. Um, and variance number eight and 10 being changed to 0 0.38. And also with the condition, um, as the applicant agreed, to as private privacy screens to both uh, balconies. And um, the condition, uh, the condition of planning and forestry as well. Okay. So motion from member Manning to approve uh, this application subject to the February 9th planning report that states the changes already made by the applicant, as well as forestry conditions, as well as variances number uh, eight and nine being increased to 0.38 uh, meters, um, as well as uh, the privacy barriers as a condition uh, to be uh, located on either side of the both balconies being proposed in the application. Do I have someone to second this motion? Seconded by Member Kidd. All those in favor? Opposed? Member Atarodi dissenting. Mr. Khan, your application has been approved with those conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Members, we'll move on to item number four. And whenever you're ready for a break, you let me know, please. Um, so moving on to item number four, we're at 165 Viewmount Avenue. This is a proposal to construct a new two-story single family dwelling. And on file, I've got um, Agent Sarah Ifra. Ms. Ifra, are you there? Ms. Ifra, you've been unmuted. Yeah, sorry, I was I was listening to the chair. I didn't I didn't hear what she said. Um, it's Sarah Ifra, agent for the applicant. And the address is 75 Dufflaw Road, Suite 201A, Toronto, M6A2W4. Okay, thank you for that. Members, we have ver seven variances noted here. We also have a transportation uh, October 27th report that actually uh, recommends approval uh, of this application, but with some conditions. Um, there are forestry conditions, actually, and in the files, we've got forestry asking for a deferral request. And transportation uh, services has uh, no objections. 
Um, Ms. Efra, just because of the forestry concerns, if you can provide us with uh, a brief presentation uh, for members. Yes. Yes, um, I did have some discussions with forestry and they will be continuing further. Um, but in terms of this proposal, this did come before the committee a little ways back. They did not see the transportation support, which was there at the time. Um, although at that time, uh, one of the members did have concerns, you know, mainly about the transportation issues, um, not knowing what their thoughts were on it. Um, but also with the coverage, which was really attributed to the deck, as well as um, a length variance. So what we did is we went back and reworked our plans a little bit. Um, I would like to tell you that variance number four for the depth is actually eliminated. It's 18.9 meters. We didn't need that variance. Okay, so you've eliminated variance. So remove, yeah. exactly, number four. Number four okay. has been removed. So, okay. Yes, so I'm I'm going to let number five, number six, and number seven, which are really transportation, driveway, garage issues, kind of leave that to the end because transportation is supportive, and I can explain, you know, why why they're beneficial. But I'd rather focus on the ones that aren't commented on. We do not have comments from um, planning staff. That should be noted. They were supportive of the application, had no issues. Um, so variance number one. We are talking about um, just the west side. So this is a side towards the street, not towards the neighbor. And that's a side yard request for 1.52 meters. Um, variances for 1.2 and 1.5 are, are uh, approved in this neighborhood many, many times. And in this case, I don't even have a neighbor next door at this point. So I think the impact of that variance is minor in nature. And uh, that's why I would ask for approval of that one. The variance number two refers to the rear deck. Now, this is the most um, indented portion of the deck. So you see between those two little bay windows, we've got 3.96 meters. The rest of the deck is actually 3.35 meters um, from the rear wall. I've also cut that deck in half, which now eliminated any um, any coverage issues, the house is under the, the coverage allowable. Um, so when we look at that 3.35 for the majority of that deck, it's an 11 foot deck, which is, an, which is a reasonable size for outdoor, um, you know, living and entertaining and, and usability of that space. Further, it's also been approved in the neighborhood a number of times and our neighbor to that east side is supportive of our application. So in that way, again, I feel the impact of this variance being mainly that the longest part is away from the neighbor and between two bays, but also that we have support and that this is a variance that's, that's you know, very prevalent in the neighborhood. I believe this is minor in nature. Number three refers to the overall length of the building. I want to be clear that's the overall length. If we look at the, I did send some drawings to show, um, you know, the one story and two story portions. It's got some green hatch and things like that. If you scroll down on here, um, the full length of the building from the very front at the garage to the very back of those little bay one story projections that's 18.9 the length of the house on the west side which is to the street again no neighbor there that's 17.55 the side that's to our neighbor is 17.16 for the two-story portion and then there's the rest of it which is then um, a one-story portion. Again, that neighbor is supportive of our application. They were supportive previous to, to these revisions, but they're, they continue to be supportive now. So I would look at that variance again for the fact that in the neighborhood, many homes of this scale and, and larger are approved. But I just want to be clear that when we say the 18.90, we are talking about the combination of the um, two-story and one-story portions. And again, all the way from the front to the back, as opposed to looking at it, you know, as it undulates. Um, and I've got a minute left. So if anyone has any questions about the transportation and driveway portions, I mean, the side that faces the street is heading towards a park. The driveways existed on Viewmount since like forever, probably 1940s. Um, it is the safer spot. I'll to, ask you to um, summarize, please. Yeah. 
it's the safer spot to have it. Now, in terms of the trees, we've got a tree at the side and then a tree at the, at the east at the front that are both mature trees. We have a very, very small city tree at the front where the current driveway is. There we go. Zoom in there. It says sapling. Um, it, it's a very small city tree, and that's the tree they're concerned with, all the way at the front there on the Viewmount side. You can see our driveway was there before. We will work with forestry and an arborist to ensure um, either moving that tree, like balling it and shifting it over slightly because it's small, um, or protecting that tree. But again, we do know we have to go through forestry. I, though, do not see a better place safety-wise. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Trees. I'll ask you to stop now. Um, we don't have any other speakers, but I want to allow um, our committee members to uh, ask any questions that they feel fit. Any questions for Ms. Ifra members? Uh, there being uh, no questions, I just wanted to share again. There's seven variances that were noted, but item number four, variance number four, has been eliminated by the agent. Um, also, we've got... Um, Transportation recommending approval, but with conditions. Of course, forestry conditions are ap uh, applicable and the agent is amenable to that. And uh, no objections, um, uh, again, from transport. So with that in mind, can I get a motion, please? Motion from member Atarodi. Yes, to you, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm ready to put forward a motion to approve this application with uh, one modification, variance number four, regarding the building depth is now eliminated and also subjected to urban forestry and also subjected to transportation report uh, to include their conditions. Okay. And that's my motion. Motion from Member Atarodi to approve with conditions and elimination of variance number four. Can I get someone to second that? Seconded by Member Manning. All those in favor? Opposed? Oh, no one's opposed. So it's unanimously approved with those conditions. Um, Ms. Uh, Ifra, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. Um, members, shall we take one more and then have a, a bit of a break? Okay, so let's move on to... Item number five, 516 Sudan Avenue. Um, this is uh, an application to construct a two-story addition to the rear of the existing dwelling in conjunction with a new detached garage. And the applicant is also proposing other interior and exterior alterations. We've got a Simon West on the file and no other speakers. Mr. West, are you there? Mr. West, you've been unmuted. And also part of the design team for this project. Yes, if I can get your uh, address, please. I think I've heard your name stated, Mr. West. My address is 3308 Lakeshore Boulevard West, Unit 4, Toronto. Thank you very much. Members, we've got seven variances noted. We've got 10 letters of support. There are urban forestry conditions and no one else to speak to this application. Do you require a presentation? No, re no presentation is required, but Mr. West, do you have anything that you'd like to share with committee members before they take this into committee for deliberation? Uh, yes, I would. Um, item, number th uh, item number three, which has to do with the rear yard setback of the existing garage or the proposed garage, sorry. And in discussions with the next door neighbor at 514, we've agreed to increase the rear yard setback of that garage from 0 0.49 meters to 0 0.741 meters. And this will cause, this will not cause any uh, changes to soft landscaping in the rear yard. So 0 0.49 meters has been changed to 0 0.41 meters. No. 741 Sorry. meters, 0.741 meters. 0.74 meters uh, for item number three. Okay. That is correct. So uh, with that, um, members, do you have any questions of Mr. West at this time? Uh, there being no questions, um, 
there is a change to item numbers three to be increased to 0.74 meters. Um, and of course, uh, there is urban forestry conditions. Can I get a motion, please? Motion from Member Kidd. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I feel the requested variances are uh, uh, minor in nature, and I'd like to put forward a motion to accept a, uh, uh, an amend the uh, amended uh, proposal. Um, variance number three, revised to read uh, the proposed rear yard set back for the ancillary building uh, is changed from 0 0.49 meters to uh, 0 0.741 meters. And uh, I'd like to make that subject to forestry condition number one. Great. M motion from member Kidd to approve this application with those conditions as he's stated. Can I get someone to second that? Seconded by member Manning. All those in favor? Uh, your application, Mr. West, has been unanimously approved with those conditions. Thank you very much. Members. Thank you. Shall we have a 10 or 15 minute break? I think we're really on schedule. Would you like 15 minutes? Yeah, see you back at 15 minutes and we'll begin with item number seven. Thank you so much. Okay, everything okay so far? Okay, do you guys see my shoes and stuff? Like, <laughs> I've got, I can't show it on camera in case I'm, I'm not on, right? Yes, I still am. So, my little comfy slippers, it's good.
Hi, members. Welcome back. Um, so we're going to get restarted. Um, as you all know, item number six was deferred. So let's move on to item number seven. Item number seven is 246 Hannah Road, and this is a proposal to construct a new two-story single home detached dwelling with an integral garage. Um, we have uh, the agent uh, for this is Mahir Manios. Mr. Manios, are you there? Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Mahir Manios. Uh, I'm the agent for the owner, number one, Teakwood Grove, Toronto, M3B, 2H9. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Manios, we do have about four um, members here to speak. Um, I note that you do have uh, three variances. There are five letters of opposition, uh, three letters of support, and there are urban forestry recommendations and conditions. Um, can you provide us with a brief presentation of the merits of your application before we move on to the speakers? I'd be happy to, Madam Chair. Um, if staff can be kind enough to put up the supporting material uh, dated Feb February 9, and scroll down to page five, uh, which happens to be the site plan. Um, so as you mentioned, Madam Chair, we're proposing uh, to replace the existing two-story dwelling with a new two-story dwelling, uh, uh, single-family dwelling. Uh, we do require uh, three variances. Uh, variances number one and two uh, pertain to the side yard setback on the north and the south side. We're proposing 0.91 versus the required 1.2 meter. I'd just like to bring to the attention of the committee, this is an improvement over the existing condition where the ha existing house is set back 0.5 and 0.73. So the, the proposed new house would be about um, two feet narrower or 0.6 meter narrower than the existing house that's there today. Um, the way the bylaw is uh, is done for the setbacks, it, it goes by the required setback, not by the required frontage, not by the actual frontage. So uh, for some reason, this is... Go uh, for this area, the required set, uh, frontage is 12 meter, which dictates the 1.2 meter uh, side yard setback. But the actual frontage of this property is 10.67. And there's various pockets in this neighborhood of North Lee side where the required front, uh, frontage is nine meter and the, setback, the required setback being 0.9 meters. And some of them are even wider properties than, this, uh, than the one we're working with uh, today. And as you might also know that until the new bylaw came into effect, the required setback for the entire lean side neighborhood was 0.9 meters. Uh, variance number three is a building length of 17.53 uh, versus 17 meters. Uh, also to bring to your attention, this is an extra deep lot that's uh, over 50 meters deep, whereas most of the properties in the north lee side or all lee side are around the 40 meter depth. Uh, the north wall is actually only five inches in variance. Um, if you Looking at the site plan in front of you, you'll see the toned area is actually the portion of the house which is in variance, and it actually represents 8% of the overall size of the house. Um, we, even with the, the reduced setback and the slight the increase in length, the actual GFA or FSI is 0 0.53 versus the required, uh, the, the maximum 60%, and the coverage is 28.5% versus the allowable 35%. And this pertains to the fact that this is an extra deep lot. Also the wall height all the way around the property on the sides and the front and the back is 6.65 versus the required seven meters. So the scale, everything scale wise is gonna be reduced. Um, I have skimmed through the neighbor's objections. I did have a chat with uh, the North neighbor over a week ago. Um, I, it seems to be a sense of confusion is we're not reducing the distance between the houses. So currently uh, the, the distance between the houses is 1.15 meter. This is actually gonna be increased to 1.55, which is a 40 centimeter increase in uh, spatial separation between the houses, which will improve access for both uh, uh, the owner of this property and the neighboring properties as well. If we were to do this as a renovation where the bylaw allows us to build above the existing one-story garage and put a two-story addition at the back, the house will actually be two feet wider and the GFA and F coverage would be almost identical to what we're proposing today. So I think at the end of the day, this is a better proposal because the houses are further away from the existing houses. Regarding landscaping, although there's no variance for landscaping, uh, the backyard we have we're proposing 89% soft landscaping versus the required 50%. Uh, 
and we have no objection to the forestry condition number three uh, for the planting of a new tree the front yard uh, my client is supportive of that uh, if committee wishes to add that as a condition um, also uh, if staff can be kind enough to scroll to the first four pages of the uh, the attachment uh, it just notes various uh, approvals uh, in the north lease side neighborhood and as committee can see there's a variety of smaller setbacks than what we're requesting today and also larger length and depth variances that we're requesting uh, so this is i'd like to submit this is definitely in keeping with what's been approved i think it, it will complement the neighborhood and fit nicely it will increase the spatial separation between the houses which will improve access uh, for both neighbors to the north and the south and i'm happy to answer any questions okay thank you so much um members do you have any questions of mr manios there being no questions um we're going to move on to uh some key speakers um starting with romel paplowski mr paplowski are you there madam chair roman paplowski is not present okay thank you very much let's move on to the next speaker lee new lee mr lee are you there lee new hey, good morning Yes. Yeah, I'm a Ron Poklaski, actually. My wife actually just stepped out. Um, okay. So I'll be speaking on her behalf. Can you speak uh, your name and address for our records, please? Yes, Roman Poklaski, 246 Hana Road. Okay. Uh, if I could, um, I had some questions. So before you start timing me, I had some questions to the designer as far as the design itself, because he appears to be saying that its improvement, et cetera, et cetera, but he has never consulted us as a neighbors about the proposed uh, setbacks. And usually most of the builders and their the, uh, builders and the homeowners consult neighbors. Uh, there is a number of issues that we wish to address, including the, the existing gate that we have in between the house. So, uh, so this is what I, wish to ask the the member the mr panios about about the issue of the existing gates that i have right i'm sure that he will respond to that uh in time but your presentation has started without exception uh so if you can actually uh you know share all of your concerns right now and he'll get to not only those questions but also try to address the concerns that you have please go ahead uh, yes uh so um my presentation is as follows. Um, why do you need to have a building standards if you don't follow them? I understand that we need a denser housing in Toronto to accommodate uh, many families who live here, but allowing existing single family homes to become larger and larger um, only covers more ground and it doesn't accommodate more people. The city of Toronto zoning bylaws requires an minimum site setback of 1.2 meters and that was changed in 2014 to zero, uh, to zero, uh, from 0 0.91. And that was uh, intention of that change of that zoning bylaw was to uh, prevent any damage to the, uh, done during the constructions of the new homes. Uh, my uh, neighbors proposing the 0 0.91 meters uh, this proposal will take away my path between the houses and my access to my backyard for several uh, months, if not a year, just to allow them to build an oversized home. I need continuous access to my path to maintain my home. Uh, there is no other way for me to move my lawnmower, uh, wheelbarrow and yard waste to my backyard. Uh, I have to a large vegetable garden, which requires a year-round veg uh, maintenance. And I think that city should encourage that. Uh, why should my neighbor desire for a lar larger home be more important than my access to my yard for gardening on an ongoing basis? My, my path has been gated and locked for my exclusive and continuous use for over 34 years. The lock gate also provides security and privacy for my children who uh, and also I've been 
very increasingly concerned about the security. Thus, there has been several incidents, including a break-ins in broad daylight, right in the neighbor to my next door, 250 HANA, there was a break-in. Um, homeless people are also trying to enter various backyards that are not uh, secured. And we had very famous incident, somebody from Sunnybrook Hospital, a naked patient ran to uh, right in our neighborhood to many backyards trying to hide from the police. And obviously that took about three and a half, four hours uh, for the police to find them. I am also concerned about excavation during the uh, uh, during this uh, reduced setback that they are proposing. My foundations might possibly uh, shift. My home is 75 years old home and the bylaw requires setback of 1.2. And it was already determined uh, seven years ago when the bylaw has, eight years ago, when the bylaw was changed from 0 0.9, that 1.2 should be a minimum safe standard. So I want the committee members to understand that, that the zoning has changed a few years back to accommodate so-called a possibility of uh, not damaging the adjacent older properties. The new neighbor and his the house designer never consulted me about this deviation. And they also are concerned about their nine foot basement uh, that is so close to my foundation. Uh, my basement is less than seven feet and the soil could possibly shift during that excavation being so close. I'll ask you to I summarize, please. Please summarize. Uh, yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Somebody is interrupting me. It's, I'm sorry. It's the chair. I'm asking you to please summarize. You're almost out of time. Oh, oh I'm sorry. But, but, uh, so if I could stress that that uh, my, my neighbor's uh, request will set a precedent and many people will follow and uh, this panel should consider um, not uh, should consider all my issues that I have raised and also the fact that my home is 75 years old and also the windows that, that I okay, have on Mr. the side Paplowski, of the house. Thank you so much. Uh, you are out of time, but I know that the panel members uh, will have those considerations and will give uh, Mr. Manios, uh, uh, an opportunity to rebut and and share his, uh, you know, his views on this as well. Okay, so let's move on without, uh, you know, we have a couple more speakers and let's move on to Mr. Roy McMurchy. Mr. McMurchy, are you there? Madam Chair, Roy McMurchy is not present. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there a Don Scott on the line? Uh, I am here, yes. Yes, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Sure, it's Don Scott. I'm at 250 Hannah Road. Okay, and if you can share your thoughts on this application, it would be appreciated. Sure, it's it's pretty straightforward. I, I've looked at their plans. We, we built our house um, in 2011. And um, I don't think the 246 plan is actually precedent setting. I think uh, the house that we built and, and a couple others that have built on, been built on Hannah Road around the same time that we built are the precedent setters. And um, I see their plans as being very similar to ours. The setback variances are the exact same that we were granted at the time. And uh, I just wanted to be here to support the application. They're uh, going to be a good neighbor and I have no objections to the uh, proposal. Okay, so you're in uh, support of the application at this time. Yes, I am. Okay, um, I didn't get a chance to follow uh, due process and I wanted to ask members, do you have any uh, questions of any of the speakers at this time? Okay, there being none, I'll invite uh, Mr. Manios to come back. And while you have a couple uh, letters and um, members who have come up forward to support, there is still five letters of opposition, which I'm sure you've read and you've heard from uh, at least one of the neighbors with uh, the majority of their concerns and he had had some questions. So please, uh, you have five minutes to respond. 
Uh, happy to, Madam Chair. Uh, regarding uh, the North Neighbors uh, comments, uh, there has been consultation. Uh, my client did distribute packages uh, to all of the na immediate neighbors, uh, four or four, five doors down on both sides, in front of it and behind it as well. I had uh, over half an hour discussion on February 7 with Mr. Roman, and uh, he did bring up all these points. And I'd like to stress these are all construction issues, not zoning issues. Um, at I hate to say this, but I think the, the reason the law was changed was never to deal with construction, because as I mentioned earlier, within the North Lee side area, there are pockets where nine meter is the required front, uh, frontage, hence the point nine meters is still the required side yard setback. If the one point, if this was an issue, they would have changed the entire neighborhood. Um, there's no rhyme or reason for which areas are nine meters and which areas are 12 meter. I think the bylaw when it was rewritten, it should have been based on the actual frontage, not on the required frontage. We just happen to be penalized because we're quite a bit smaller than the existing one. Um, whether the house is set back 0.9 meters or 1.2 meters, shoring will have to be done. So and it will have to be at the property line. There will be a disruption. I do agree, uh, admit to that. That's just the course of construction for when the foundation, when the house is being demolished and the, the new foundations are being put up. Uh, I did uh, discuss with the North neighbor that we're willing to work with him to uh, minimize that disruption. Uh, the spatial separation between the houses without sounding like a broken record is going to be improved by 40 centimeters on that side. So if anything, it's going to be an improvement. If this house is to be renovated, the existing condition will remain, hence there be less space between the houses. Uh, there is no precedent being set here, as the committee can see from the four pages of uh, previous decisions that we have submitted. There's over 100 applications which have similar and smaller side yard setbacks and even deeper houses. And I'd like to reiterate that the house is at 53% FSI, which is one of the most common variances in the neighborhood. We're actually 7% lower than the required setback, and the coverage is 28% versus the 35%, which is uh, allowable. So this is by no means maximizing every aspect of the zoning bylaw. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions the committee might have. All right, thank you for that. Members, do you have any questions of Mr. Manios? Okay, there being none, uh, you've heard from the neighborhood uh, residents. Uh, you've seen the letters of opposition and support. Um, there are three variances. Uh, there are urban uh, forestry uh, conditions. Um, and with that, I'll leave you to a motion. Motion from Member Manning. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application subject to the conditions of forestry. Um, I've listened to the neighbor's concerns, but I do believe all three variances uh, meet the, the four tests for a minor variance, uh, especially considering that there are improvements of existing conditions. Okay, thank you. Member Manning with a motion to approve with those conditions. Can I have someone to second that motion? Seconded by Member Kidd. All those in favor? Unanimously approved uh, with those conditions. Mr. Manios, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, um, moving on to item number eight, and I believe that this is uh, two parts, so it's item number eight and nine, it's going to be the same agent, and that's for 380 Davisville, but we'll do it one at a time, so let's start with 380 Davisville, that's Rainer Hoyer, and this is a proposal to partially enclose the existing porch. Mr. Hoyer, are you there? Uh, present. And if you can state your name and address for the record, please. Rhino Hoyer, Port 18 King Street East, Suite 1400. Okay, Mr. Hoyer um, and members, this is there's one variance that's noted. Uh, there are 10 signatures of support, and there are urban forestry recommendations for this application. Um, there is no one else to talk to this application. Do you require a presentation at this time? Or any questions? Okay, there being none, uh, Mr. Hoyer, is there anything that you'd like to share with committee members before they take this into uh, a committee for deliberation? I'd just like to say it's, this is very minor, all existing uh, conditions of enclosing an existing uh, front porch 
partially. Okay, thank you very much. Members, if there are no other questions, um, can I entertain a motion, please? Motion from Member Kidd. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I feel this is uh, um, uh, a reasonable proposal and uh, a minor in nature. I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application and uh, you, you mentioned a forestry condition. I, I, I don't see that in, in my record. Did I miss? Uh, did I miss that? I cannot hear you. Okay, sorry about that. I was just consulting with um, uh, planning staff, uh, city staff, and uh, yeah, you are absolutely correct. It it is actually yeah, three okay. variances, and it and no urban forestry. Okay, okay, uh, that's my motion. Then uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, so uh, motion from Member Kidd to approve uh, this application as is, uh, seconded by. Member Atarodi, all those in favor? This application has been unanimously approved. And let's move on then with the same agent. Wouldn't ask you to repeat your name, but this is for the 382 Davisville location. This is the application with one variance. And um, just uh, double checking about um, if there was urban forestry. I, I see nothing listed on here. So, and there is uh, nine signatures of uh, support. Um, so again, uh, do members, do you need a presentation on this application? There being none, um, Mr. Hoyer, is there anything else that you'd like to say before we move into committee for deliberation? Basically the other half of the same semi doing the same job together, enclosing partially the front porch. Oh. existing conditions understood members if there are no other uh questions can i entertain a motion please motion okay uh member kid with a motion uh Chair, again, uh, I, I feel this is uh, my, uh, the requested variances are minor in nature. I'd like to put forward a motion to accept the application uh, uh, without condition. Okay. Motion from Member Kidd to accept this application without condition. Seconded by Member Atarodi. All those in favor? Mr. Hoyer, your application uh, has been unanimously approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item number 10, that's 108 Abitibi Avenue, and this is to construct a new detached dwelling, uh, and we've got an Ali Yi on the line. There's no other speakers on here. Mr. Yi, are you there? Hello? Oh, Miss Lee, is that Miss Ali Yi? Is that you? Uh, ah, yes. Yes. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. Oh, well, here's uh, Ali Yi um, from uh, Alero Engineering and the Construction Union. Okay. Um, 45 French Avenue West. Thank you so much. Okay, got, got you. There's a little bit of um, uh, timing delay for the audio on my end, but I've heard you clearly. Um, members, there's four variances uh, that are noted here, and um, we've got uh, no other persons to speak to this application. There is a staff report with a number of revisions they wanted, so I'm gonna turn it back to um, the agent to share with us what are the very what changes they're making to the application based on the February 9th staff report, if any. Uh, yes, we have well, four minor variances required, and uh, after talk to the planner, uh, for the 
atom two, the coverage uh, we we propose is thirty two point two eight percent. We decrease it uh, to thirty two percent. Okay, so you are changing. Just to be very clear with members, you are changing uh, variance number two to thirty two percent from thirty two point two eight percent. Yes. Any other changes? No, no. Okay, no other changes uh, noted. And I did see that uh, staff uh, has sent in an email um, indicating that, you know, they've had uh, conversations um, with you and that there's no more concerns with the application. Uh, so that being said, uh, members, do you have any questions of Ms. Yi? With no other questions and with that change to variance number two, um, can I get a motion, please? Motion from Member Atarodi. Yes, to you, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with one modification that the variance number two is now read the proposed lot coverage is now 32%. And that is my motion. Okay, motion from Member Atarodi, thank you, with uh, a, a motion to approve with those changes, seconded by Member Manning. All those in favor? Unanimously approved with those conditions. Ms. Yee, your application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, moving on, committee members, to application number 11. This is 17 Gorman Park Road. There's no one else to speak for this application. Uh, Gorman Park Road is a proposal to construct a new dwelling. I've got a, um, a Christopher Zianis. Mr. Zianis, are you there? I'm here. Right, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Chris Zianis, 41 Yorkshire Road. Okay, Mr. Yanis, do you, uh, I, I noted that there are seven variances uh, here, and then there was a February 9th planning staff report for which uh, they were asking you to uh, make some specific revisions. You do have four letters of support, and there is urban forestry uh, on this application. Um, are you willing to make the changes in the staff report? What revisions will you be making today, if any? Yes, I have. I have actually submitted revised drawings and a cover letter stating that we're going to revise variances number one, two, and five, as per planning's recommendations. Right, and if you can say that to us so that we can have that for the record, can you tell us what variances you are changing from what to what? Sure. So variance number one, the proposed north side yard setback of the non-encroaching rear yard platform is 1.209. We are changing that to 1.531. For variance number two, we are going from 0 0.949 meters to 1.247 meters. And variance number five, we are going from 6.84% to 6.5%. Okay, so you're meeting the staff recommendations. Um, and members, um, I think- I would also like to add yes. that we have seven letters of support, not four. And they were all submitted. Okay. Um, I did not see that on file, but uh, I'm sure that they might be there. Yes, okay. So they are there. Um, a number of letters, yes, four letters of support that I had seen. Okay. There uh, was another three that I submitted after the fact. Oh, okay. Separately. Sure. Okay. Two um, of which are from the, the neighbor, neighbors directly next door. Okay. Thank you for the information. Side. Members, do you, require, do you have any questions or require a further presentation? I'm seeing Ms. Member Kidd. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I just uh, I noticed uh, that in the staff report, the uh, planning staff are requesting uh, revisions to variance number six and seven. Uh, I'm, uh, just uh, my question is whether the uh, 
the, the agent is uh, proposing to make those changes or not? Mr. No, Jones, we are not proposing yeah. to make changes to six and seven. Okay. I can provide evidence to why if, if yes, if you, you can like. share, if you can share, yeah, please that. if you could. Sure. So the the existing home on the lot to the south side, the existing side yard setback is one point two. Um, you would also note that the property to the north has a side yard setback of 1.2. So it is prevalent in the neighborhood of a 1.2 side yard setback for both existing homes and new homes. I did provide a, um, a map showing approvals that have been uh, approved in the neighborhood of coverage over 34.5%. And of those, there are a number of examples showing 1.2 yard setback 1.2 meter yard setbacks that have been approved to lots of the same width so we think that this is in keeping with the character of the neighborhood and what's been approved in the past as well as what's currently existing okay thank you for that explanation uh members do you have any further questions Okay, um, members, you've got an application with seven variances. You've got planning staff report of which he has uh, met the needs of variance, the planning staff report by meeting the revisions of variances um, one, two, and five. However, is not um, intending to modify variances six or seven for which the staff report is recommending refusal of those variances. Uh, there is urban forestry, but there is four letters of support, including either side of the property, the side yard neighbors. Um, can I entertain a motion, please? Can I, uh, to you, Madam Chair, I have I have another question. Please feel free. Allow me. Go ahead. To you, Madam Chair, I would like to ask the applicant by modifying variance number one and two that it's uh, regarding the north your north side yard. Um, sit back. Um, does that one, that modification affect the variance number six? And please no. explain. No, it doesn't because that increase in the side yard setback is only to the rear yard deck. It was an increase to the rear yard deck and not to the actual dwelling. Okay, thank you. Okay. No more questions. Can I get a motion, please? We do need some time to consider this, so I leave it to members whenever you're ready. Member Kidd with a motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the, 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 the reading the uh, planning staff uh, uh, report, uh, uh, planning staff have done a, uh, a review of the neighborhood and they, uh, they're they convinced that uh, 1. Uh, um, uh, 1.5 meters is a, is a more uh, appropriate side yard setback for this property. And uh, so I'm gonna put forward a motion to accept this application uh, as amended um variance uh, uh number one uh revised to read um rear uh, north side yard set back to the rear deck um uh, to be changed from uh, 1.209 meters to 1.5 uh, uh, 1.13 meters variance number two uh, revised to read that the uh, rear canopy uh, um, uh, north side yard set back uh, be revised uh, from um, 0 0.949 meters to uh, 1.247 meters. Variance number five um, revised to read that the uh, um, proposed lot area coverage for uh, by platforms 
be changed from 6.84 percentage to 6.5 percentage and um, um, variance number six and seven to be uh, refused. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, 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 also subject to forestry condition number three. Great. Thank you, Member Kidd, with a motion to approve with those specific conditions. Can I get someone to second this motion? Seconded by Member Manning. All those in favor? Opposed? Member Atarodi dissenting. Uh, Mr. Yanis, your application has been pro uh, approved with those specific conditions, including refusal of variances number six and seven. Thank you so much. Moving on to item number 12. That's 27 Alder Dale Court. Um, 27 Alder Dale Court is an application or proposal to construct a one-story rear addition to the northwest side of the existing dwelling and a rear porch and roof addition. Um, this has five variances. There's no one else to speak to this application. The agent is a Mr. John Cybernick. Mr. Cybernick, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. If you Can the committee your hear me? and address for us, please. It's John Sibenick, 24 Ovita Avenue, Toronto, Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Sibenick. Um, members, five variances noted, uh, no other conditions. Um, do we need a presentation on this application or any questions? Okay. There being uh, uh, no need for a presentation at this time, Mr. Sibenick, is there anything you'd like to share with the, com the panel um, uh, just uh, maybe a one minute presentation, just absolutely. to recap everything, if I For could. Sure. Yeah. Ahead. Um, thank you. Um, this property is a one story dwelling located on a dead end street where the majority of the dwellings are either partial two story or full two story buildings. Um, in 2017, the owners hired a contractor to construct an addition under a 2017 permit. Unfortunately, the contractor was not honorable and failed to complete the inspections and submit for revisions of an enclosed rear porch and interior revisions. I was engaged in 2022 by the new contractor who is experienced with complex uh, claims to complete the revisions to the open permit. The uh, zoning review that followed identified five deficiencies. Um, they included lot coverage building length, depth, side yard setback, and rear yard setback. Um, my comments are that the irregular shaped uh, lot contributed to the shortfall in the rear yard setback and the side yard setback, although there may have been a construction error in regards to the side yard setback. Nonetheless, the side yard and rear yard setback deficiencies is a small portion of the side yard because much of the side yard complies with the required setbacks. Okay, so is, are we okay with the that? That's, that's the end of your presentation? Uh, I just got one more sentence, if I could. Oh, sure. You um, just paused there for a yeah. moment, so I didn't hear you. I think Sorry the about audio that. Cut out. That may have been my... Okay, okay. go ahead. Uh, it was probably my fault. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, the enclosed porch is the scale and proportion appropriate for this site where the location of the addition is primarily at the rear of the dwelling where setbacks are greatest and where privacy is maximized and where trees are most beneficial. The character of the addition is in keeping with the character of the existing home and suitable for the neighborhood. That concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sibenik. Members, do you have any questions of the agent at this time? Yes, Member Kidd, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, yeah, I understand that the the uh, uh, the uh, addition has already been built, but uh, how how long has it been there? Uh, good. So it, it it's still open because there's still a couple of deficiencies, um, in interior uh, things that have to be done, and um, some building code requirements that need to be met. 
So, so it's under construction now. Uh, is that it's right? not under construction, but it will be under um, uh, a renovation uh, to comply with the structural elements, the building code requirements. Um, uh, but there's no construction really from the exterior of the building to be done other than maybe adding some skylights. Um, but the roof that is there will be maintained. So we're not looking at uh, reconstructing walls um, um, or roofs. It's just a lot of internal work that's required. Okay, uh, thank, thanks very much. You're welcome. Any other panel members for questions? There being none, can I get a motion on this application and members um, just please note that there's just the five variances and no other comments from any other uh, staff agencies. Member Atarodi. To you, Madam Chair, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application as is. Okay, Member Atarodi, thank you with an um, a motion to approve this application as is. Seconded by Member Manning. All those in favor? Unanimously approved. Mr. Sibenik, your application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you, committee. Okay, moving on, members, uh, to item number 13. This is uh, 25 Stafford Road. Uh, 25 Stafford Road is an application to construct a rare one-story addition in conjunction with other interior and exterior alterations. Um, please note, members, that Transportation Services did have a February 9th uh, report that recommends approval of the application, but with specific conditions. Um, there is urban forestry on this. Um, and so, uh, and there's no one else to speak to this application. The agent is a Giorgio Frasca. Mr. Frasca, are you there? Giorgio, are you there? I am here. Okay. You hear me? Yes, I can. Can you state your name and address for our records, please? Yes, my name is Giorgio Frasca. Uh, your address, please. 2781 Highway 7, Vaughan, Ontario. Okay, we're having trouble hearing you, uh, but I did hear the address. I want to make sure, are committee members hearing the agent at all? Just raise your hand if you've heard him. Okay, so a couple members are not hearing them. I'll just... Uh, I'll just test this out for a second. Mr. Frasca, can you just say your name and address one more time so that we can test the volume here? Yes, I'll try to speak a bit louder. My name is Giorgio Frasca from 2781 Highway 7 in Vaughan, Ontario. Okay, we're still having some problems hearing you. Um, just double checking members, do you still have issues hearing him? If you nod your head saying yes or no. You're, you're not having issues. We can hear it, but it's it's very, um, the voice is not clear. Okay, so maybe if we can have uh, Mr. Frasca uh, go in very close to the phone and speak as loudly as you can. Um, there is uh, no other um, uh, persons to speak to this application. Um, members, do you have, uh, do you want, do, do you require a presentation? at this time? I see Mr. Kidd's camera has gone off. Okay, it's back on again. We are having a little bit of technical difficulties here, but I hope you're hearing me well. Um, I see that no one has requested a presentation. <laughs> Mr. Frasca, can you, uh, is there anything you'd like to share with committee members um, before they go into committee for deliberation on this item? Are you okay um, with the transportation uh, conditions that were provided as of February 9th? Yes, yes, we are, Madam Chair. 
And is there anything else you'd like to tell committee members before they take this into consideration? We're, we're okay both with transportation and forestry conditions. Okay, perfect. Uh, with that, members, can I get a motion, knowing that there is a transportation conditions and forestry conditions that were there. Member Manning with a motion. For you, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application subject to the conditions of transportation as well as forestry. Thank you, Member Manning, with a motion to accept this application with those conditions, seconded by Member Atarodi. All those in favor? Uh, opposed? M Member Kidd, I just want to double check. Are you opposed or for the application? There may be some connection problems, so I just wanted to double check what your uh, what your motion was. Now um, he's gone offline. I think he might be coming back. Uh, we could hear you if you could tell us if you are for or against the application. Member Kidd? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're having some trouble in uh, the, the committee room hearing you. If you're able to state again. Are members hearing Mr. Kidd, Member Kidd, or is it, uh, we're not hearing him at all here. I did hear him say he was in favor, Madam Chair. Okay. So I will take that because I think his hand did go up, but I, it was very slow, and I think that he was having some connection issues. So we'll take that as uh, he's in favor of the application. So uh, it's been unanimously approved with those conditions. Mr. Frasca, your application has been approved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, we still do have quorum as Mr. Member Kidd is uh, reconnecting and we see him again. So um, we'll move on then to the final item of the morning schedule and we did capture your, you being in favor of the last application. If that is incorrect, we can, you can always share that with city staff. But um, item number 14 is number 198 Hounslow Avenue. Members, there is no, um, other speakers to this application. Um, it is uh, to construct a new one-story uh, one addition to the front garage. There are two variances noted, and there is a city planning staff report um, that's saying that they are satisfied with the revisions made by the applicant, and there is also uh, a late councillor uh, correspondence that came in saying that they are in favor of the application. So they're supporting it. Um, so the agent is an Ao Yu. Ao Yu, are you there? Hi, could you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, if I you can state your name and address for the record, please. Sure. My name is Ao Yu from LHW Engineer. Uh, address is 27. Uh, 2347 Kennedy Road, Scarborough. Uh, I'm here today authorized by the owner of uh, 198 Hostel uh, Avenue to attend hearing today. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. The public notice does show that there are two variances. However, I understand that revisions have been made. Uh, would you care to share that and put that on the record for us and tell us what the variance, what the changes are that you're making? Uh, yes, for sure. Uh, I remember like the uh, lot coverage is reduced to uh, 32% of the lot area and the front setback is increased to 6.03. 6.03. Okay, so I, variance Major. number one has been changed it has been reduced to 32% and variance number two has been increased to 6.03 meters. 
Is that correct? Uh, yeah, let me double check. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, members, uh, just those two variances that have been modified and staff seems, planning staff seems to be okay with that and the counselor has sent in a letter of uh, support. Do you need a presentation at this time? Uh, there being none, um, Mr. Yu, do you have anything that you would like uh, the committee members to know before they take this into committee for deliberation? Uh, no, I'm good with this. All right. Thank you. Great. Members, if there are no other questions for Mr. Yu, can I get a motion on this application? Member Manning with a motion. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve this application, uh, including uh, the following revisions. Uh, number one, variance number one, the lock coverage is changed to 32%. And variance number two, uh, the front yard setback is is... Uh, changed to 6.03 meters uh, with no other further conditions. Thank you, Member Manning, with a motion to approve with those conditions. And can I get someone to second that motion, seconded by Member Kidd? All those in favor? Uh, Mr. Yu, your application has been unanimously approved with the revisions you've made here today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and the committee member. All right, thank you so much. Members, that brings us to the last item. We will continue with item number uh, 15, and that's the p.m. session starting at 2 p.m. Enjoy your very long, hard-earned lunch. See you then. <laughs>